Today we are talking about a verse in John chapter 18, verse 10 through 11. Just really thinking about this, this cup that we have in communion, the value, the, the treasure that it is. So in this verse, Judas has betrayed Jesus. All the leaders come out. They, they gather around Jesus on the night of Passover. They begin to try to arrest him and bring him in. And it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Some of the other versions of the gospel say that Jesus then put his ear back. He healed and put his ear back on. The servant's name was Malchus. And then Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into its sheath. Shall I not drink the cup that the Father has given me? Think about this for a second. Jesus is drinking this cup in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's praying, Father, let this cup be taken away from me. What is this cup? It's the cup of God's wrath. God's wrath been being stored up for since the beginning of time, really. His wrath is being stored up, and the cup of his wrath is poured full strength onto the body of Jesus. The cup of his wrath is poured full strength onto the body of Jesus so that we can have this cup of blessing, this cup of thanksgiving, this cup of the new covenant, this cup of participation in partnership in Christ. We can have this cup of blessing. So we're going to take communion over this today. This is a time of gratitude for this cup and what Jesus went through to make this possible for us. Let's get started with our time of communion, or daily prayer, and then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for everybody who's watching or listening, their families, their friends, everybody connected to them, and all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness and transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your Son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And that Jesus was struck down, he was smitten, bruised and pierced and crushed and destroyed, also that you could be on our side, that you could be fighting for us. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you more and more. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you called us. And the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us. And the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead. And you seated him at your right hand in heavenly places. Far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. And Father, I ask you to bless us. And to make your face shine upon us, let us find grace and favor in your eyes. Expand our borders and our territory. Expand our capacity to receive everything you've given us in Christ. And to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. Send us opportunities to do good and be a blessing today. And help us make the most of those opportunities. Keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes. And do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And I ask you to stretch out your hand to heal. And do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain. Through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we're just so grateful that Jesus was willing to drink this cup for us. He didn't want to do it. See, he prayed three times in the garden, asking that it would be taken away from him. But he willingly chose to do it 
for us, out of his great love for you, out of his great love for us. We're just asking for a deeper revelation of this cup that he drank for us and the cup that we now have because of him. And so I thank you the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We get this opportunity today to remember we've been made one with you through the sacrifice of Jesus. And by his stripes, we've been healed. We've been raised up. We've been seated together with him in heavenly places. And so I thank you for this bread and ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go and take our bread. <clears throat> Then after supper, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this is the cup, the new covenant. In my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. We get to have this cup because of the cup that he drank for us. And so, Father, I thank you for this cup. And ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. Let's go ahead and take our juice. All right, let's talk about some health and fitness tips. So I think physical exercise is meant to teach us how to exercise our faith. So when I had my gym business, one of the things we used to teach people all the time is that whenever you set a new best for the day, I say you set a PR, you do something you've never done before. It's usually time to stop. It's time to finish the workout because you've done enough to stimulate your body to grow and to change and to adapt and to make progress. You usually don't need to do anymore. You've done enough to send those signals. And so get out of there and allow that body to rest. Allow it to grow. Allow it to recover. Allow it to adapt and change and improve. Oftentimes, the best thing you can do is you can finish a workout. Feeling like you should have done a little more. Because now you're motivated, you're excited, you're energized to come back the next time. And also you're not, you know, wearing your body down either. I hope this went out for you. Keep remembering. Expect something good to happen today. Because the master is with you. He loves you. And nothing's impossible for him. And I look forward to seeing you in our next video.